Well, here we go with lesson 33, section 8.4, the dot product. Well, this is be the only uh, lesson that we have on section 8.4. The dot product of two vectors has many applications. Uh, we are only going to use it uh, in this lesson to find to to help us find the angle between two vectors. First, we need to we need to figure out what a dot product is. And you can see here that we've got the official algebraic definition, which most students pretty much hate. Basically what it means is we're going to multiply the x's, we're going to multiply the y's, and then we're going to add them up. That's it. Notice we use a dot between them. This is not foiling. All right, so we're just going to multiply the x's, multiply the y's, report the sum, and that's it. The dot product of two vectors, a dot b, is simply a number. It can be positive, it can be negative. So we're going to find the dot product between these two vectors, negative 2, 5, and 3, 6. So what we do is take negative 2 times 3 and take 5 times 6, add them up, and we get 24. That's it. The dot product of A and B is 24. The relative size, whether it's positive or negative, doesn't really mean a lot to us. And again, we only use this with, a, with an equation I'm about to show you. But that's how we find the dot product between two vectors. It's not foiling. So let's talk about the angle between any two vectors. Any two non-zero vectors may be represented in the coordinate plane. We've done that many times by line segments. They or, their origin is the origin. That's why we call it the origin. To the endpoints A, comma, A1, A2, comma, and then A, B1, B2. So we basically lay down two vectors, and we want to find the angle between them. All right, well, there are a few restrictions. Uh, theta has to be between 0 and pi, or 0 and 180 degrees. And then we have a couple of special cases here. If theta is 0, then the vectors are in the same direction. And if they are, it's equal to 180 or pi, then they're in opposite directions. Either way, we call them parallel. So we want to define parallel vectors, and we want to uh, define orthogonal vectors. Uh, a, theta, uh, a and b are parallel. The angle between them is 0 or pi. In other words, they're going the same direction or opposite direction. Orthogonal is probably a new word. Uh, orthogonal, A and B are orthogonal. Any two vectors are orthogonal if they're perpendicular to each other. In other words, the angle between them is pi over 2 radians or 90 degrees. So orthogonal means perpendicular. Parallel can mean the angle is 0 or 180. 0 meaning they're the same direction. 180 means they're going in opposite direction. Either way, we could refer to them as parallel. So now we have the theorem of the dot product. If theta is the angle between two non-zero vectors, then the dot product is equal to the product of their magnitudes times the cosine of the angle between them. However, that's not a lot of use, because normally we know the dot product, and we know the magnitudes of what we're looking for is the cosine. And so we're going to show you a theorem that we put our, uh, the theorem or the equation that we put on the formula sheet for finding the angle between any two vectors. And all we do is simply solve this equation for cosine theta. So divide both sides by the uh, magnitude of A and the magnitude of B. And there's your formula. And this is one we give you on the formula sheet, that the cosine of the angle between two vectors is their dot product divided by the product of their magnitudes, which will normally be in square roots. And I, I leave those as square roots. I, I don't put um, decimal equivalencies down there. So that's a theorem that's really handy. There's other ways to find the angle between two vectors. But this is a really handy little formula. And again, we provide it for you on the formula sheet. Now, two vectors are considered orthogonal if and only if their dot product is zero. If and only if, remember that's bidirectional statement from your geometry days. It means it goes both ways. If the dot product is zero, they're perpendicular. If they're perpendicular, the dot product is zero. Now, why is this? Well, go back to the, go back to the equation up there, right above this. If the dot product is zero, then we're hitting in, then, then that fraction is zero. So we're doing the inverse cosine of zero. We don't care about the magnitude of A and B. If they're orthogonal, the perpendicular, the, the length of A and B won't change the angle any. So go back at that equation, look at the numerator. If the dot product is nothing, then the fraction is equal to nothing, zero. If you take the inverse cosine of zero, you get 90 degrees. So we know that if the dot product is zero, they're orthogonal. They're perpendicular to each other. So let's do this. Find the angle between the two vectors. And so my vectors are 8i th uh, plus 3j and 2i minus 7j. And a lot of you were probably going to write 8 comma 3 and 2 comma negative 7 using the little sideways carrots. Uh, so we want to find the angle between these two, so we have to find three things. We have to find the dot product, we have to find the magnitude of a, and we have to find the magnitude of b. And we've got to be careful. 
So here we go. We've got to find the dot product, and the dot product of the two vectors is 8 times 2 plus 3 times negative 7. And then we have to find the magnitude of A, and we have to find the magnitude of B. And you got to shift gears here. Don't go x to x, y to y like you just did. You've got to get back up there. Magnitude of A is the square root of the sum of 8 squared plus 3 squared times, and then the square root of the sum of 2 squared plus 7 squared. And the mistake students make on this one, you just finished doing the dot product, 8 times 2, 3 times negative 7. And then in that next line, the denominator, I see 8 squared plus 2 squared, 3 squared plus negative 7 squared. Don't do that. So the shift gear is there. All right, so 16 plus negative 21 is negative 5. Square root of 73 times the square root of 70, 53 is the square root of 3,869, which is about 62.62.2. Negative 5 divided by the square root of 3,869 is negative 0.804. Now we do the inverse cosine. Now if you do the inverse cosine of a negative, you know this is an obtuse angle. And look there. It's 94.6 degrees. So that's how we use this formula. That's how we use the dot product to find the angle between any two vectors. And I'll tell you it again. We, we put this formula on the formula sheet. Dot product divided by the product of their magnitudes, inverse cosine, and you got it. All right. All right. So let's find the dot product, and let's find the angle between the two vectors. And so we do 4 times 3 and negative 6 times 2, and we get 2, 12 plus negative 12. Oh, that's 0. So the dot product is 0. And remember, I said something earlier about that. But let's go ahead and play this out and see where it ends up so I can emphasize that point about what happens when the dot product is 0. And so we do cosine theta equals 0 divided by, and I'm not going to bother taking the time to find the magnitude of A and the magnitude of B. I know they have one. But it doesn't make any difference. It's 0 divided by I don't care is equal to 0. And if you do this on your calculator, put 0 in your calculator, hit inverse cosine, it'll say 90 degrees. And that goes back to that theorem I talked about earlier, that when the dot product is 0, the vectors are orthogonal. And if you were to sketch this out, you would see pretty quickly that this is a right angle. And the reason we don't care about the, the magnitudes in this case is because regardless of how long A and B or how short they are, it doesn't change the angle any. So there you go. So if the dot product is 0, they're orthogonal. If they're orthogonal, the dot product is 0. That was fun. All right, let's do one here. We said find the dot product and find the, find the angle between the two vectors. Now notice A there only has 3J. It has, um, you could say, 0I. We don't really write that, but that's really what you have there. You have 0I plus 3J. So the first thing we're going to do is find the dot product. And so I do 0 times 2 plus 3 times 6, and you get 0 plus 18. And so the dot product is 18. I will say this. If the dot product is positive, the angle between the vectors will be acute because you'll be doing the inverse cosine of a positive value. If the dot product between the dot product of the vectors is negative, your, your angle has got to be obtuse because in our formula, the denominator will always be positive. So that's about the only thing the dot product really tells you uh, before heading in, in hitting inverse cosine. Well, let's find the magnitude of A, which is going to be, well, 3, right? I, I don't know why I did all that work, but yeah, it's 3. If you just sketched it, it would just been up the uh, y-axis, 3 units. Find the magnitude of B, which is the square root of 40. And so the cosine of theta is the dot product between the divided by the product of their magnitudes, 3 times square root of 40. And if you do that, you get 0.9487. Look, that's positive. Do the inverse cosine of 0.9487, and the angle between them is 18.4 degrees. And so there's the angle between A and B. There was other ways to do this one besides that, yeah, but this, I think this is a pretty slick little way of doing it. Uh, there's another idea here is always sketch these out. You, you might want to sketch this out, you know, 0, 3, and 2, comma 6, just to get a rough idea of what the angle should be and whether it should be obtuse or not. That's totally up to you. All right, this one simply says show the two vectors are orthogonal. And we've done this a couple times already in this lesson. All you have to do is show the dot product is zero. Because we have a theorem that says if the dot product is zero, then the two vectors are orthogonal. So show the dot product is zero, and you're done. So 4 times 2 is 8. Negative 1 times 8 is negative 8. And if you add those up, you get zero. And you simply state, since the dot product is zero, the vectors are orthogonal. And again, you could use the cosine and theta formula and you would be dividing into 0, which is 0, and the inverse cosine of 0 is pi over 2, or 90 degrees. That's all you have to do to show two vectors are orthogonal. 
Now here they say show the two the vectors are parallel and determine whether they have the same direction or opposite directions. And the dot product doesn't give this away. You actually have to find the angle between the two. Do the inverse cosine and either get zero, that means they're going the same direction, or a pi or 180 degrees, and that means they're going in the opposite direction. Either way, that makes them parallel. So we have to do what? To find the dot product, we have to find the magnitude of A, we have to find the magnitude of B, we have to find the angle between the two. So let's get to work. Well, we have to find the dot product first. So we take 5 thirds times 3, which is, of course is 5, and we take 10 times 18, which is 180, and we add those up, we get 185. Dot product is done. And this is a little nasty, but use your calculator. We take 5 thirds squared and get 25 ninths, and 10 squared and get 100. And so that is, just use your calculator, that's the square root of 102.7777. Find the magnitude of B, so that's 3 squared plus 18 squared, we end up with the square root of 333. So the cosine of theta is equal to 185 divided by the square root of 102.77777 times square root of 333. And you look, and lo and behold, you get 185 divided by 185, which is 1. And the inverse cosine of 1 is 0. You can use your calculator to prove this, hopefully you already knew that. Therefore, we say that the angle between the vectors is, is, since the angle between the vectors is zero, we therefore say the vectors are parallel and they have, they are going in the same direction. They're both heading, actually what they are is one's a little, one is a multiple of the other one, is what you can say. That's it. Now, had we been doing the inverse cosine of negative one, we'd have gotten 180 degrees or, or pi radians, and we'd have said they're parallel going in opposite direction. That's but the dot product didn't give it away. Look at that dot product was 185. That doesn't tell you anything. It's only after you do the whole thing that you find out uh, that it's either 0 or 180 degrees. And there you go. Uh, let's do another one. Show the vectors are parallel and determine whether they are the same direction or in opposite directions. Same deal. Find the dot product. Find the magnitude of A, the magnitude of B. Do the inverse cosine, and we'll figure this out. Well, these are a little nicer numbers than the last example, but 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, negative 4 times 8 is negative 32, so those add up to negative 34, there's your dot product. Now again, shift gears here, the magnitude of A is 1 squared plus 4 squared, the magnitude of B is 2 squared plus 8 squared, and so we have square root of 17 times square root of 68, which is the square root of 1,156, which happens to be... Uh, the, the square of 34, so the square root of that is 34. So this is negative 34 divided by 34, inverse cosine of negative 1 is 180 degrees or pi radians. So since the angle between the vectors is 180 degrees, the vectors are parallel and they have the opposite direction. There you go. So if you're taking the inverse cosine of 1, they're the same direction parallel. If you're doing the inverse cosine of negative 1, they're in the opposite direction, but they're still parallel. Okay, let's wrap up with a couple more examples here. Determine the value of the variable m since the two vectors are orthogonal. Well, what we're going to do is do the dot product and set it equal to 0 and solve for m. Now, that m stays with the 5. I just want to make that clear. So I take 3 times 4 plus negative 2 times 5m, and now it just turns into, and set it equal to 0, and now it just turns into an algebra 1 problem. 12 plus negative 10m equals 0. Uh, I subtracted 12 from both sides, I divided by negative 10, and we ended up with a 6 fifths for an answer. And so if m is 6 fifths, the two vectors are orthogonal. And how do you test it? You put 6 fifths back up for m. And when you do that, look what happens. You end up with a 6j there with the b vector, and you end up with 12 plus negative 12. Oh my god, it works! Make sure it works. Make sure this is, it's very easy to get negative 6 fifths instead of the proper answer, 6 fifths. Check your work. Make sure this produces a dot product of zero. Let's do another example. All right, this one is the same instructions. Find the value of m such the two vectors are orthogonal. I've got 9i minus 16mj, and vector b is i plus 4mj. And so we're going to end up with an m squared here, it looks like. So we take 1 plus negative 16m times 4m, and we get 9 plus negative 64m squared. So I subtract 9 from both sides, I divide by negative 64, and I get m squared equals 9 64ths. And when you take the square root of both sides, you have to put plus or minus, because m could be positive or negative, and you get 3 eighths. Hey, we ended up with two answers here. Not the biggest deal in the world. m can be positive 3 eighths, or m can be negative 3 eighths. You get two solutions. That wraps it up. Get to work.